Hi, I'm Daniel Miller with NASCO, and today we're talking about the evaluation of cooperative staff members. So we talked earlier about why you'd want to have evaluations and how to make sure that you have a positive evaluation culture that's part of how your co-op does things and builds trust. But today I wanted to talk a little bit more specifically about how to avoid any sense of bias in your evaluations of staff. So let's go ahead and jump in. One of the things that's really important for your co-op to have evaluations where everybody feels like this is a safe and honest process is to avoid any sense of bias in your evaluations, whether that bias is something that is real or just something that people perceive. Something that's really important is that evaluations are a way that you can make the workplace for your co-op more just and more respectful of the needs of the members, of the rights of the workers, and more productive so that everybody's part of one team and helping move the co-op forward. So objective evaluations can be a tool that you can use to challenge systems of power that perpetuate privilege or oppression in your co-op. So employment discrimination is still a very real thing, and it's hardly ever something that is open. It's usually something that is unconscious, but it still happens. And so having a clear set of evaluations means that you can step back and look at the data and look at things in a way that avoids any sort of bias or perceptions that you might have without knowing it, or just eliminate the risk that people feel like there's that perception. People can end up isolated or scapegoated when problems come up. So you want to make sure to evaluate the performance of your staff in the whole context. You want to make sure not to be evaluating any of your staff members in isolation, and you want to make sure that the context includes the other staff members, includes the board, the members, your policies. You want to look at the big picture so that if things are working right, you don't just say things are working well because we have this awesome soft staff member or things aren't working well because the staff member is doing a terrible job and they're a terrible person. That's a really unhealthy evaluation process. You want to make sure to say, well, there are some things that this person could have done better, but also they weren't given the tools they needed, and here's how we're going to address that. Here are the tools that we're going to offer this person. Here are the things that we expect from this person. People's salaries are also tied to positive evaluations. So evaluations can be a way to make sure you're not paying people differently based on biases. Right? So you end up with somebody who, let's say somebody who's male and has an assertive personality, and so people see them as a leader on staff and they want to pay them more. Uh, if you have an evaluation process that's driven by data and includes all of the different voices that you can get, then you have a better chance of saying who's doing a really good job and who do we want to say, this is how we want to reward your great work, or these are the things that we want to see change before there's a change in your salary. Some things that can help make that evaluation more objective. You want to be able to look at the nature of the relationships that your staff are building with their coworkers, with the members of the co-op, and with stakeholders outside of the co-op, but that are important partners. You want to avoid an eval based around perfection. Your staff are going to make mistakes just like your members make mistakes and everybody else makes mistakes. You want to make sure that your co-op looks at room for improvement as a good thing because it means that you have a clear idea of how you want things to be and you have a clearer idea of how to get to where you want to be. You want to make sure to balance the evaluation of the quantity of work with the quality of work. So did they get the thing out on time? But also, was it useful? Did it make sense to people? Was it helpful? Did it do what we needed? You want to ask about potential conflicts, but remember that conflict may just be a sign of progress or growth and not always bad behavior. It may be that there's sort of some conflict that needs to be worked out as the job descriptions changed and somebody took on a new duty. And so they were frustrated by um, what they found when they took on that duty or they're sort of shuffling their priorities. So having some conflict isn't necessarily a problem. It can be a really healthy thing. Uh, just make sure that that conflict can be viewed constructively. And if nothing else, you want to make sure that you can eliminate whether or not that conflict is about some um, useful and growth-oriented issue rather than something that's negative or destructive um, that needs to be addressed in a different way. Some other things that can really help make these evaluations more objective. Just remember that rankings and ratings aren't necessarily objective. 
If you ask people, do you think this staff member is respectful and professional on a scale of one to five, well, sure, you've put it on a scale of one to five, and that's a number, and you can make a chart at the end of the process. But that doesn't mean that the actual information is really objective. If you're saying, did they show up for work on time, well, that's pretty objective. They showed up or they didn't. But people will rate these ratings one to five or A through F or whatever system you're using. There's going to be some subjective opinion in there. So you want to make sure that it's at least something you keep in the back of your mind as you're going through this process, that there may be opinions that come out. Now, my own experience looking at some staff evaluations is that that's probably going to be obvious when you look at the comments that people leave, that sometimes things are very personal or very subjective. That's okay, too. It doesn't mean that that's wrong. It just means it's something that you should keep in mind, that just because somebody got a 3.2 out of 5 on a certain issue, that there can be some subjectivity there. It's going to be really tempting to use a uniform survey and say it accurately reflects somebody's work performance. Honestly, it's probably best that you do use a uniform survey, but you want to make sure not to mistake that survey just because you've used it in the past as being perfect. So it may be that it needs to change from year to year. It's just that you want to make sure you keep those changes in a way that's clear so that you can preserve some continuity from surveys that have been done in the past and make comparisons. So if you add a new question or if you change the wording of something, that's fine. Uh, it may mean that your surveys and your evaluations are getting better, but it also means that you need to remember that that's something that changed, and also remember that you may want to change those surveys in the future. You're also going to want to make sure to look at the full picture of what's happening. I know I've said this a couple times, but it really is important. So is the person's job description a useful reflection of what you want out of them? Do they interact with their staff members in a way that supports their work and everybody else's? Do they have useful feedback from the members on a regular basis? Because if the only time they hear what they're doing right or wrong is once every year or every two years, well, there's more room for things to sort of drift. So you want to make sure that there's a culture of just regularly having feedback about what does or doesn't work in a constructive way so that when that evaluation comes up, it makes sense and you see that full picture. You want to look at what are the challenges that that person is doing in their is looking at in their job, either personally or organizationally. Do they have something in their personal life that is worth remarking on because it's a temporary thing? Maybe they were gone for a few months for parental leave, or you know they had some other major life event. They had a health issue. So those are something that's worth noting when you're doing those evaluations. But also organizationally. Did the co-op just expand? Was there a big crisis that happened? Was there a big disagreement that happened? Uh, is there something else that's noteworthy about the structure of their job and their relationship to the, the co-op's work that you want to note in that evaluation process? And who provided feedback through the evaluations? Did they represent the co-op accurately? If the feedback is only from a couple of board members or is only from other staff, you're probably not going to see the full picture. In general, you want to have as many different voices as possible and as many different relationships as possible. If you have multiple houses in your co-op, make sure that the average member from each of those houses knows that the survey exists and has a chance to give an evaluation survey. Make sure that you have people who are hired by the co-op or contractors the co-op worked with. Make sure that if there's some important community partner, if you have people who regularly attend your board meetings from outside of the co-op to talk about issues, you want to just try and get as many different perspectives as possible because that's how you're going to make sure that you have a really well-rounded idea of what's working. Evaluations can be a really useful tool for spotting power dynamics among your staff. So ask questions about whether your staff are sharing information with one another and with the members, or whether that holding that information close to their chest. And that can tell you something. If they're not sharing information, is it information that would be inappropriate to share? Maybe there are personal uh, details on everybody's contract that lives in the co-op. right? So everybody has a lease, and it has their driver's license number and date of birth. And that's something that's really confidential. Well, that should be confidential. On the other hand, if they are supposed to be giving reports on their work as a staff member and they're not giving those reports or the reports uh, are missing information that you think is important, well, that's something that might be really useful. And especially if you're asking board members, other staff members, 
whether that staff person is sharing information in a way that's useful. And, and I think in particular with other staff members, that can be a really helpful way to spot power dynamics before they blow up. You're also going to want to look about unhealthy power dynamics in the use of strong or emotional language in the survey comments. And if you see something that seems really loaded, that seems really personal, you might want to follow up with an in-depth conversation. An evaluation for your staff doesn't have to end at giving people a two-page survey and then you know, compiling the results and putting out some charts. If you see something that you want to flag as being worth talking about, you can have a lot of different channels. So your survey is one channel. Sitting down and having a one-on-one -on -one conversation is another. And so if you see those things, make sure that that's worth following up on. Maybe you caught somebody on a bad day and they evaluated using some loaded language. Maybe there's something really important that deserves some one-on-one -on -one conversation. Having your evaluations in a regularly scheduled way and avoiding them as a sort of reaction is a way to help avoiding the idea that evaluations are a kind of retaliation. There are employment laws that change from state to state, but one thing you want to make sure of is that your evaluation isn't a kind of retaliation, isn't a kind of harassment of your staff. Because if somebody that works for the co-op can make the case that well, this evaluation was really just invented to try to get me out of my job or um, was uh, pointed especially at me and not at other people because I was pointing out problems, right? So you don't want to get in a situation where your staff member would be seen as like a whistleblower and the co-op as sort of a, a corrupt entity, um, whether that is a real problem or something that's just a perception. So having those evaluations regularly, talking about them regularly, having regular checkups to, to follow up and see how that evaluation went. Those are all sort of making it a normal part of your culture. And again, you just want to make sure to evaluate all of your staff within a larger process, not one person at a time. So you want to make sure that you see the intersection between the evaluation of one staff and of another staff. And ideally, if your co-op has a board that does self-evaluations or evaluations of one another, and you have some idea of what's expected of the board and what's expected of each board member, then the board can also be doing some evaluation of themselves to say, did we ask for this from staff? Did we demand it from staff? Uh, did we ask critical questions when we got this information? Right. So the more that you can see the big picture and the more you can see how things intersect, the more likely you're going to get an evaluation that's going to help the co-op grow and move forward. 